So what's up guys, uh, my name is Alex Pandrea, I am 30 years old, I'm turning 31 actually uh, in a few days, five days from now. I've been doing magic ever since I was interested in it since I was five, I've uh, been doing it seriously since I was like 10, 11 or 12, something like that where I found the magic shop uh, and I've been doing it ever since. So 50,000 on YouTube, it's obviously a surprise that uh, I only started a year ago really with YouTube and I was just doing it just for fun. I just figured I'd put some fun videos up there, some tutorials, but I never thought that it would grow so fast. Um, and I never thought that I would enjoy it as much as I do. Now, I, I take my time and I make good, I try to make good content for everybody um, because in the beginning it was just tutorials to sort of, um, sort of, continue on with, uh, uh, with products and sales and with with different things that I wanted sort of to promote through my YouTube but now it's really about just teaching because I realized I love teaching magic every time I go to lectures I love the involvement between the people so what made me really want to do this more and more is all the comments of people saying oh you're an inspiration you help me do this so you keep going or whatever so that's what really got me going to post more and more every week um, but it's really really fun so thank you thank you for you know there's a lot more to come but thank you for sticking with me and uh, and checking out my channel. So it's very interesting because I traveled the world and I've done magic and lectured all around 126 cities in the last two and a half years, something like that. Um, and I realized that there's, in all parts of the world there's different types of, of magic, right? And the people differ in the type of magic that they do differ. Like for instance, in America, it's very commercial type magic, it's very, uh, it's not as professional as it can be, as opposed to let's say like moving on to Spain, right, Spain is very uh, technical in their like table magic, so they really think about everything um, that they do and they put a lot of importance on it, and moving through Europe I see the same thing, um, I'm in France right now, I'm in Paris, and I saw the same thing in my lecture last night, is that people are very, very interested in the sleight of hand, why you do certain things, why this move is important, why should you learn this. Um, so I'm very impressed. I've lectured all over France, uh, but this is the first time in Paris, and I was glad to see especially young people come out, and, and usually young people, they don't necessarily know like a lot about you know the history or whatever but I'm pleased to see that France is super super good because they know a lot they're experienced and they want to learn so this is a very very interesting and important question there's a very fine line between exposure and and trying to benefit the art form so every when I started this was only a year ago I started I thought to myself look there's already tutorials on YouTube there's already people showing things in a very very bad way and that is only negative because it's out there already yeah people could find it if they want to find it if they're interested they're gonna find it no matter what there's no stopping them right um, so if they want to search magic on YouTube that's fine but if they're interested in learning then at least have them learn it right uh, and I was so sick of seeing tutorials on like the past or like a, a palm or things that were just done completely wrong by let's say a 13 year old kid who probably doesn't know that they just want to expose the move they know how to do it so they say oh let me get you know some views but I'm just trying to do the basics that are already out online you know it already you can find it already but at least come to me because I'll teach you how to do it correctly and I'll give you more advice than than just the move itself Um, so everybody asks me about the knocks just because they've been super popular, like people really like to use them and the idea came, this was a long time ago, the idea came when I was about 12 years old, I was in Tannin's magic shop and I found an effect, it was a mentalism uh, trick from Michael Murray and it was called Beyond ESP, uh, I believe that's what it was called. So there was a deck of cards with ESP symbols but on the back it looked like knocks and they were marked. So they were marked for the ESP symbols, one sharp it was for a uh, circle, right, one. And then plus sign was two, wavy line was three, so on and so forth. So I really liked that concept, but nobody was doing it with the deck of cards. Fast forward 10 years later, and um, nobody did that, so I thought it was cool to do. I tried it out. I thought it was a stupid idea to begin with, uh, but it caught on. So then, you know, we started making uh, different variations, and it uh, seems to be popular, so I'm very happy for that. For a 
places from the center. That's the diamond, that's the hearts. Hearts and diamonds, the third one comes out of the center of the deck. Actually, not the center of the deck, the center of the two aces. Just like that, that's either spades or clubs, yes? Spades or clubs, uh, I think, oh yes, yeah, spades. Yeah, spades because the clubs was already there from the very beginning, all four aces. Okay.